Hello, hello friends. Uh, let's get comfortable for another couple chapters of Goosebumps. Say cheese and die. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I'm in an office today that's a little like a boiler room, so that's kind of spooky, right? Adds to the chill factor. Um, okay, so we last read chapter three and four. Ooh, yes. At the end of chapter four, um, Michael had hurt his ankle. He fell off the stairs where he was posing for the picture and somebody else was in the house. <gasps> so let's start on chapter five and see how far we get. I honestly think we're gonna be able to read a couple chapters today. So let's do it. Chapter five, the footsteps overhead grew louder. The four friends exchanged frightened glances. We've got to get out of here, Sherry whispered. The ceiling creaked. You can't leave me here, Michael protested. He pulled himself into a sitting position. Quick, stand up, Bird instructed. Michael struggled to his feet. I can't stand on this foot. His face re revealed his panic. We'll help you, Sherry said, turning her eyes to Bird. I'll take one arm, you take the other. Bird obediently moved forward and pulled Michael's arm around his shoulder. Okay, let's move. Sherry whispered, supporting Michael from the other side. But how do we get out? Bird asked breathlessly. The footsteps grew louder. The ceiling creaked under their weight. We can't go up the stairs, Michael whispered, leaning on Sherry and Bird. There's another stairway behind the furnace. Greg told them, pointing. It leads out? Michael asked, wincing from his ankle pain. Uh, probably. Greg led the way. Just pray the door isn't padlocked or something. We're praying. We're praying, Bird declared. We're out of here, Sherry said, groaning under the weight of Michael's arm. Leaning heavily against Sherry and Bird, Michael hobbled after Greg, and they made their way to the stairs behind the furnace. The stairs, they saw, led to a wooden double doors up on the ground level. I don't see a padlock, Greg said warily. Please, doors, be open. Hey, who's down there? An angry man's voice called from behind them. It's, it's Spidey, Michael stammered. Hurry, Sherry urged, giving Greg a frightened push. Come on. Greg set the camera down on the top step. Then he reached up and grabbed the handles of the double doors. Who's down there? Spidey sounded closer, angrier. The doors could be locked from the outside, Greg whispered, hesitating. Just push them, man, Bird pleaded. Greg took a deep breath and pushed with all of his strength. The door didn't budge. We're trapped, he told them. Now what? Michael whined. Try again, Bird urged Greg. Maybe they're just stuck. He slid out from under Michael's arm. Here, I'll help you. Greg moved over to give Bird room to set up beside him. Ready? He asked. One, two, three, push. Both boys pushed against the heavy wooden doors with all their might and the doors swung open. Okay, now we're out of here. Sherry declared happily, picking up the camera. Greg led the way out. The backyard, he saw, was a weed choked and overgrown as the front yard. An enormous limb had fallen off an old oak tree, probably during a storm, and was lying half in the tree, half on the ground. Somehow, Bird and Sherry managed to drag Michael up the steps and onto the grass. Can you walk? Try it, Bird said. Still leaning against the two of them, Michael reluctantly pushed his foot down on the ground. He lifted it, then pushed again. Hey, it feels a little bit better, he said, surprised. Then let's go, Bird said. They ran to the overgrown hedge that edged along the side of the yard. Michael, on his own now, stepping gingerly on the bad ankle, doing his best to keep up. Then, staying in the shadow of the hedge, they made their way around the house to the front. 
All right, Bird cried happily as they reached the street. Oh, he made it! Gasping for breath, Greg stopped at the curb and turned back towards the house. Look, he cried, pointing up to the living room window. A dark figure stood in the window, hands pressed against the glass. It's Spidey, Sherry said. He's just staring at us, Michael cried. Weird, Greg said. Let's go. They didn't stop till they got to Michael's house, a sprawling redwood ranch style house behind a shady front lawn. How's the ankle? Greg asked. It's loosened up a lot. It doesn't even hurt that much, Michael said. Man, you could have been killed, Bird declared, wiping sweat off his forehead with the sleeve of his t-shirt. Thanks for reminding me, Michael said dryly. Luckily, you've got all that extra padding, Bird teased. Shut up, Michael muttered. Well, you guys wanted adventure, Sherry said, leaning back against the trunk of the tree. That guy, Spidey, is definitely weird, Bird said, shaking his head. You see the way he was staring at us? Michael asked. All dressed in black and everything. He looked like some kind of zombie or something. He saw us, Greg said softly, suddenly feeling a chill of dread. He saw us very clearly. We'd better stay away from there. What for? Michael demanded. It isn't his house. He's just sleeping there. We could call the police on him. But if he's really crazy or something, there's no telling what he might do, Greg replied thoughtfully. Aw, he's not going to do anything, Sherry said quietly. Spidey doesn't want trouble. He just wants to be left alone. Yeah, Michael agreed quickly. He didn't want us messing with his stuff. That's why he yelled like that and came after us. Michael was leaning over, rubbing his ankle. Hey, where's my picture? He demanded, straightening up and turning to Greg. Huh? You know, the picture you snapped with the camera? Oh, right. Greg suddenly realized he still had the camera gripped tightly in his hand. He set it down carefully on the grass and reached into his back pocket. I put it in here when we started to run, he explained. Well, did it come out? Michael demanded. The three of them huddled around Greg to get a view of the snapshot. Whoa. Hold on a minute. Greg cried, staring at the small square photo. Something's wrong. What's going on here? Chapter seven. The four friends gaped at the photograph in Greg's hand, their mouths dropping open in surprise. The camera had caught Michael in mid air as he fell through the broken railing to the floor. That's impossible. Sherry cried. You snapped the picture before I fell, Michael declared, grabbing the photo out of Greg's hand so that he could study it up close. I remember it. You remember it wrong, Bird said, moving to get another look at it over Michael's shoulder. You were falling, man. What a great action shot. He picked up the camera. This is a good camera you stole, Greg. I didn't steal it, Greg started. I mean, I didn't realize I wasn't falling, Michael insisted, tilting the picture in his hand, studying it from every angle. I was posing, remember? I had a big goofy smile on my face and I was posing. I remember the goofy smile, Bird said, handing the camera back to Greg. Do you have any other expression? You're not funny, Bird, Michael muttered. He pocketed the picture. Weird, Greg said. He glanced at his watch. Hey, I have to get going. He said goodbye to the others and headed for home. The afternoon sun was lowering behind a cluster of palm trees, casting long, shifting shadows over the sidewalk. He had promised his mother he'd straighten up his room and help with the vacuuming before dinner. And now he was late. What was the strange car in the driveway? He wondered, jogging across the neighbor's lawn towards his house. It was a navy blue tourist station wagon, brand new. Dad picked up our new car, he realized. Wow, Greg stopped to admire it. It still had the sticker glued on the front window. 
He pulled open the driver's door, leaned in, and smelled the vinyl up upholstery. Hmm, that new car smell. He inhaled deeply again. It smelled so good, so fresh, so new. He closed the door hard, appreciating the solid clunk it made as it closed. What a great new car, he thought excitedly. He raised the camera to his eye and took a few steps back off the drive. I've got to take a picture of this, he thought, to remember what the car was like when it was totally new. He backed up until he framed the entire profile of the station wagon in his viewfinder. Then he pressed the shutter button. As before, the camera clicked loudly and flash flashed with an, elect an electric whir. A squared, undeveloped photo of gray and yellow slid out of the bottom. Carrying the camera and the snapshot, Greg ran into the house through the front door. I'm home, he called. Down in a minute, and hurried up the carpeted stairs to his room. Greg, is that you? Your father is home, his mother called from downstairs. I know, be right down, sorry I'm late, Greg shouted back. I better hide the camera, he decided. If mom and dad see it, they'll wanna know whose it is and where I got it. And I won't be able to answer either of those questions. Greg, did you see the new car? Are you coming down? His mother called impatiently from the foot of the stairs. I'm coming, he yelled. His eyes searched frantically for a good hiding place. Under the bed? No, his mom might back him under there and discover it. Then Greg remembered the secret compartment in his headboard. He had discovered the compartment years ago when his parents had bought him a new bedroom set. Quickly, he shoved the camera in. Peering into the mirror above his dresser, he gave his blonde hair a quick brush, rubbed the, a black soot smudge off his cheek with one hand and started for the door. He stopped in the doorway. The snapshot of the car. Where did he put it? He tossed it on, he took a few seconds to remember that he had tossed it onto his bed. Curious about how it came out, he turned back to retrieve it. Oh no, he uttered a low cry as he gazed up at the snapshot. Chapter eight. What's going on here, Greg wondered. He brought the photo up close to his face. This isn't right, he thought. How can this be? The blue tourist station wagon in the photo was a mess. It looked as if it had been in a terrible accident. The windshield was shattered. Metal was twisted and bent. The door of the driver's side was caved in. The car appeared totaled. This is impossible, Greg uttered out loud. Greg, where are you? His mother called. We're all hungry and you're keeping us waiting. Sorry, he answered, unable to take his eyes off the snapshot. Coming! He shoved the photo into his top dresser drawer and made his way downstairs. The image of the totaled car burnt into his mind. Just to make sure, he crossed the living room and peeked out the front window to the driveway. There stood the station wagon, sparkling in the glow of the setting sun, shiny, perfect. He turned and walked into the dining room where his brother and his parents were already seated. The new wagon is awesome, Dad, Greg said, trying to shake the snapshot image from his thoughts. But he kept seeing the twisted metal and caved in driver's door and shattered windshield. After dinner, Greg's dad announced happily, I'm taking you all for a drive in the new car. And that's the end of chapter eight. We'll leave it there. Um, really cruising through this book, you guys. I'm liking it a lot. So let me know if you are too. And um, I'll see you next time for chapter nine. Goodbye.